Loic is a core developer of uh, Scikit-learn. He's also a contributor to Pyodide, which is bringing a Python distribution in the browser thanks to WebAssembly. So we will uh, learn about uh, Loic's uh, experience with uh, Pyodide. Put your hands together for, for Loic. Thanks a lot. Uh, hello, everyone. So I'm Luc Estem, and I'm going to talk about my adventure uh, going from the scientific Python into the, let's say, like parallel universe of Pyodide WebAssembly. OK, so a, a bit about myself. Uh, I have a, a, a background in particle physics. Uh, my, my PhD main achievement is to measure a cos and a sine uh, plus or minus 0.8. So that was the experimental error, which, you know, like uh, cos and a sine has strong theoretical bounds. Uh, so uh, I didn't revolutionize particle physics, uh, but I got a PhD, so that's already something. I, I went on to work in finance. Uh, I was kind of forced to do C++. Yeah, had to do C++, but I was doing as much Python as I could. And, uh, and then these last eight years, I've been working at Indria as a software engineer. Uh, being involved in uh, open source Python packages. Uh, there's a few there. I'm a core developer of Scikit-learn and Joblib. Uh, uh, there you go. And the last two years, I was also part of the um, Scikit-learn MOOC, massive uh, uh, online open course um, that we did with uh, other people at Inria. It was uh, a lot of fun. Okay, so that's a bit about me. If you're not a native speaker, uh, English native speaker like me, for example, I'm not a native speaker. You might wonder what foray means in my title. So there's a military uh, uh, definition, which is not the one I'm going to use. You know, I'm not going to uh, attack or steal something from Pyodide. And there's a more, like, let's say, normal definition, which is to say that basically it's a bit outside my comfort zone, but uh, still it's been quite fun and productive. Okay, and if you really want to know and you know French, I was trying to find the equivalent for incursion in French. But that's if you really want to know. Okay, so the outline of my talk. Um, so I'm going to do a super brief uh, overview of Pyodide Web Assembly. I'm going to talk about the uh, current status of NumPy, SciPy, and Scikit-learn in Pyodide. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about some work I've done to package OpenBlast that actually improved the situation of the SciPy and Scikit-learn. And I'm going to talk at the end. Uh, the main motivation uh, was to actually make the Scikit-learn documentation more user-friendly, in particular by uh, adding more interactivity. So I'm going to talk about that at the, at the end. OK, so super brief WebAssembly Pyodide. So basically, you have some C++ code. You can compile it with mscripten. It gives some uh, WASM or WebAssembly. It's the same uh, module. And then, and then somehow the browser or other runtime like Node.js uh, knows how to run this. Um, that's it. Uh, and then uh, what is Pyodide? Basically, CPython is written in C. So you can use this tool chain to, to have Python inside the browser. Um, and you have other things, like because like here you, you know very well that we need other scientific packages that have compiled code as well, uh, C in the, or, or Fortran in the SciPy case. And on top of that, so, so Pyodide is give you, giving you a distribution of these build packages. And on top of that, you can also install a pure Python wheel from PI, by PI. So that's, in a nutshell, like what Pyodide is. But at the end, it allows you to do import SciPy, import scikit-learn, run scikit-learn code, or scikit-image, or this kind of thing, inside your browser and the computation happens inside your browser. OK, so, so uh, good enough. But wh why should you care? So there are two main use cases where Pyodide shines. The first one is tutorial slash education. Uh, bas basically, you give a link to some people, and then they can run, uh, they can run the, the tutorial or, or the exercise without having uh, to install anything. The computation happens fully in the browser, so you don't, give, don't, you don't need to have a Jupyter app or something like that. It can be quite complicated to, to set up. Um, and the, the other use case is a simple web application. Let's say you know how to do something with scikit-image and you want to turn it into a, a, web a simple web application, then you can use uh, uh, your Python code uh, inside this web application. And if it's not enough to convince you, uh, CPython do care as well about WebAssembly. Now it's a tier three support. So that means that some people are responsible for build boat and then if it breaks, it's not too bad. And it might be in a tier two support soon. That means if it breaks, it starts becoming a bit bad, and they might revert uh, the commit that breaks the build. OK, some projects using Pyodide. Uh, basically, the, there's the PyScript, which allows you to have a PyScript tag inside your HTML where you can run Python code. So that was kind of the scikit image web app, small web app that I was talking about. Uh, you have JupyterLite that you may be aware of, 
which is JupyterLab running entirely in, in your browser. In particular, your kernel is using Python inside your browser, not from a, a, another Python server somewhere. Uh, there is this French use case, which is called Baston. Uh, and basically for them, uh, so it's like in high school computer science education, and they had some Docker setup to provide computation for users in a, in a web browser, but it was a nightmare to manage because then sometimes you have plenty of, of students using at the same time, and you know they have other things to do that to manage this complicated server setup. It was a real game changer to be able to switch to Pyodide and, um, and that the computation happened in the browser. They don't need to manage this complicated server setup. And you have plenty of others. For example, if you know Streamlit, which is to do like quick web app with uh, machine learning somehow, uh, you have the equivalent using Jupyter Lite is Elite. You have TB Lite, I guess, that will be mentioned in the next talk by Steve, uh, which is uh, TB, so to have interactive documentation, TB that use uh, as well uh, Jupyter Lite kernel. Right. So, why did I get involved? Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> Sometimes I actually wonder. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so, so basically, curiosity is was first. I was like, okay, interesting. We can run some code, but our, uh, what is working, what is not working, and what is completely broken beyond repair, basically. That was a goal. It helped that I knew uh, Roman Yurchak, which is a, a, a core developer of uh, Pyodyne and was involved in Scikit-Learn as well before. Uh, my goal also was to add uh, interactivity to, uh, to Scikit-Learn documentation using Pyodyne slash Jupyterlite. And hopefully, uh, I, I hope to kind of learn something new and different, and hopefully that was both useful and fun. So that was the idea. So, so when things went well in Pyodite, so uh, I started looking at this around, uh, let's say, September 2022. So this PR was already existing, I think, so there was a PR on, on, on NumPy to actually uh, build the wheel, build the Pyodite wheel and test it uh, for NumPy. Uh, it was merged in November 2022. So it means that uh, the full uh, NumPy test suite works, except a few tests that you, you skip because uh, you have Pyodide limitation. I'm going to mention some of them uh, later. And it was done not by me. It was done by Uchatam, which is a Pyodide maintainer. And I looked in the repo. It doesn't seem like it, it broke it, uh, uh, very often, and it caused many additional work, let's say, for the NumPy uh, uh, maintainers. So that when things work well. So NumPy works well. Uh, when things don't work so well, and I got in, uh, I, I found the first snippet uh, by running actually the, the scikit-learn test suite. I'm going to say more about how to run it inside Pyodide. And this kind of uh, uh, generic error is called uh, memory corruption. And basically, so you have some code, you generate the toy data sets with uh, scikit-learn, but actually inside there's only NumPy. And you run some least square with scipy linalg, and uh, if you run it once, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you run it twice, then uh, if you run it long enough, like uh, in this for loop, 10,000 times, so eventually you will get an error. Okay, so either you will get a memory-related error, like memory access out of bound. It, it tends to happen in different uh, places in the stack, uh, but it will happen. Sometimes, if you're lucky or unlucky, depending what you want to call it, uh, you will actually get a Python error, but that doesn't make any sense, because on some first iteration it will work, and after a while, then it will start breaking. So the, the type at, at the TP, uh, TP9 field for a while, and then suddenly it starts having it, right? That, uh, well, okay, I prefer the, the previous error, if you ask me. But fine, it depends where the memory gets corrupted, actually, uh, so, so far as I know. Uh, and sometimes it hangs. Wow, okay. So, so when I saw that, I was like, oh boy. I, I was not expecting this. <laughs> uh, but oh well. Uh, and somehow, this is the good uh, news in this. It just fixes stuff magically. I don't know why, uh, but in Pyodide 022, I started, uh, now it's 023, uh, on 24 dev, now it's actually, but the last release, 023, it started working. So, so I guess maybe it was an encrypted bug, I'm not sure. Uh, but okay, sometimes it's fixed uh, itself by magic. But there are other uh, uh, places, especially in SciPy, where this kind of stuff happens. So that's why I wanted to mention it. And the other kind of uh, broad uh, thing that can happen is called signature mismatch. So there's another um, snippet here with a uh, cipher sparse. And basically, you will get this uh, null function of function mismatch uh, thing. And that happens because like WebAssembly slash mscriptm is more picky about types than uh, typ your typical C compilers. So if you, if you want to know there is this link with the function pointer cast handling uh, by, uh, by Hood Chatham. And uh, basically, if you cast your, your function pointer in C, maybe you'll get a warning at compile time, maybe not. 
but at runtime, most compiler will work. But if you do that in, uh, in WebAssembly, you will actually get an error saying, oh, wait a minute, this function was supposed to take two arguments and you give me three. What's happening? Uh, and actually, it happened in NumPy, for example. So that was fixed by Hood when he, he tried to do run the uh, NumPy test suite. And that happens that, you know, like, uh, for example, a type def at the wrong return type, like uh, double instead of void, but everything was working fine for years. Uh, it happened that comparators in NumPy uh, had two arguments instead of three, but that's fine if you don't use the th third argument in, in a C compiler web. So basically, we bumped into that in, in uh, Pyodide. Uh, and for NumPy, it's not too hard like, to fix, but generally, so it's deterministic, this kind of error, so it's good it's compared to the previous one where it breaks with like weird error message and it's hard, to, you don't know what's going on. So this one is deterministic. Uh, it's debuggable, but then uh, it's time consuming to investigate and fix. So that's the two broad kind of bad things that can happen in, uh, in the Pyodide land. Really bad, let's say. Okay, so, so, so I, got, I found this in, by running the test suite in Pyodide. So how do, I, how do you run the test suite in Pyodide, you may ask? Good question. Um, so first, you have a, a JavaScript uh, wrapper that is kind of running the Pyodide run Python to uh, take a, py, uh, a string where you put some Python code in it, and so you can import PyTest, you can run PyTest. So that's the first thing. On top of that, uh, the, as I mentioned, like the PyDide uh, fatal error, so the memory corruption or uh, a signature mismatch, they actually crash the Python interpreter. So you cannot run the, the full SciPy test suite because it will crash at one point and you have no uh, information about the rest. So, so what I do is I, I run, I have a Python script on top of the GS script that executed in, the GS script in a, um, for each submodule in a subprocess so that now I can say, okay, this subprocess passed, this subprocess failed, this subprocess has a fatal, uh, fatal error. And by tracking this, I know like whether they are uh, regression or not because I run it like uh, against the Pyodide development version uh, regularly. And there's also, uh, uh, conftest.py so that you can skip some tests. So after, after you decide, okay, this is failing, you look at the failures and you say, okay, but this is a Pyodide limitation, let's expel the OS1. And, and sometimes you say, okay, this one is actually a memory corruption, uh, so I need to skip it. Uh, or this one sometimes, and I don't know why, but sometimes the, the, the test inside Pyodide takes a really long time, let's say more than 25 minutes, for example. And I, I'm guessing this is some computation happening uh, because it doesn't converge and somehow it keeps, uh, keeps going and going. Uh, I'm not sure, I haven't looked at all of them. And we'll see, uh, I'll give a, uh, some kind of SciPy status uh, later about that. Okay, and, and uh, the, the script I mentioned, the CI I mentioned is actually in two uh, repo, one for SciPy, so lestev.scipy test pyodide and one for scikit-learn scikit -learn test pyodide. So that's, I run the, the test suite regularly and I try to fix some of the issue when I as, as, uh, when I, the more I understand the issue and one of the things I some hope to fix it because sometimes uh, the hope is not very high. But I'll talk about that later. Okay. Right. So fast forward a few months uh, since I started running the, 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 the CI. Um, the scikit-learn test suite passes. Woohoo! Victory. Unbelievable. Okay. Small caveat. Uh, there are some tests that are expelled uh, due to pyodide limitation. So some of them are easy, kind of, okay, you don't have support for processes, you're inside a browser, so you don't have support for processes or threads. Fair enough. If your if uh, uh, test use uh, processes or thread, um, you just expel it. So memmap is not fully supported. Honestly, I don't understand uh, exactly well memmap in detail, so I don't know uh, what is exactly not supported, but let's uh, expel this one as well. And something more uh, surprising, and that will be a limitation for, for a few more years at least, is that there's no floating point exception in WebAssembly. That means you will never get a divide by zero warning or error from NumPy. So if you use that for your logic, as is the case in SciPy, actually I found some place where if, if you get a, an error, then you will stop computation, uh, then, then it can be a problem actually. It's not, only, it's not only that you don't get the warning, but if you use this kind of stuff for your logic, like uh, trying and catching uh, some kind of exception, float exception, then it might be a problem. And yeah, the last one is that there's some magic to make import works in Pyodide that can actually, uh, behind the scene, do something on the uh, JavaScript side. And this is not implemented for like import lib and, and underscore underscore import. 
the status is always available, the latest status, so it's passes. So, uh, so I will try my best to keep it passes for the next uh, few months at least. But uh, the, the latest status is in this repo. And uh, when Pyodide 024 is released, because this is the test suite passes with the development version of Pyodide, then we'll build the test uh, well in scikit-learn CI the same way that it did for NumPy. And if we break something in scikit-learn, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll try to fix it at one point. OK, so that was the good news for scikit-learn. Uh, now that's uh, not so good news, uh, SciPy. So plenty of failures everywhere. If you're a SciPy, if you know about SciPy and have some hints where I should start, uh, please let me know. Uh, if you want to get involved into this parallel uh, WebAssembly slash Biodide universe, uh, please come and talk to me at the end. Uh, so the good news is SciPy Linux almost passes. I think those ones are just... Are just <laughs> are a signature mismatch, so that they are deterministic and fixable. Uh, they are when using complex numbers, so scikit-learn doesn't care about complex numbers, so for now, I'll, I leave them alone. And also in, in some LAPAC function that I never heard of before, uh, but uh, so that scikit-learn doesn't use, so I will leave them. Um, my uh, hunch is that when there are some Fortran code involved, uh, you get into trouble, basically. And I'll explain a bit why afterwards. Uh, the, the underlying hacks that Pyodide uses. But the, the always more updated thing is like in this uh, repo, SciPy test Pyodide. And as I say, if you're interested or if my talk uh, tickles your curiosity, please talk to me uh, and we'll see uh, whether you, you can help or you, we can work together on that. So why is it not so simple for SciPy? So there's no, at the moment, a Fortran compiler that can target WebAssembly. So this is an issue, and the, the pi, pi, Pyodide approach is to use F2C, which is uh, something from a uh, long time ago, uh, which supports uh, Fortran 77, so it's from a while ago. So with that, you can, comp you can transform Fortran file into C file, and then you can run Mscape 10 to, from the generated C file to get WebAssembly. So there are SciPy patches uh, in some places, plus some custom Pyodide hacks, because Sometimes you have non Fortran 77 code, so you remove some keywords hoping everything will be fine, like a recursive or this kind of thing. And sometimes, even after running F2C, the, ge the generated uh, signature doesn't match the rest of SciPy, for example, because, because yeah, you have additional arguments for characters and this kind of thing. So we fix that afterwards. Uh, and in SciPy, uh, there are different layers of code generation, so it's a bit hard to know uh, where to fix things and to understand and to uh, debug. Um, and also, like the compile and test loop is a bit uh, long. So basically, if you need to compile uh, SciPy, it's like 20 minutes. You try your fix, and it's not, it's not fixing anything. So then you try other thing, and then it, it kills a bit your productivity. And on the medium term slash long term, uh, my hope uh, is that L4 Fortran will be able to compile all of SciPy. Uh, so if you have some info about that, I'm very happy to chat because uh, I, I read some issues, but uh, I'm not an expert in cursing. And apparently, although Fortran compilers might be able to do that at one point, so uh, yeah, so that's my hope. Right, so now I'm gonna talk briefly about the open blast packaging work. So until, uh, until uh, recently, Pyodide uh, basically was using CLAPAC, which is like a F2C uh, ver uh, file from LAPAC, which is not maintained anymore, and they had uh, X on top of that. And the goal was that by switching to OpenBus, which is maintain where you have some maintainers where you can have questions if you get into trouble, then it will help uh, maintainability. Uh, it will help maintainability, and you never know, you cross your finger, and maybe it will uh, uh, get rid of some of the SciPy issues I mentioned, right? So that was the hope. Uh, now there's the hope, and there's the work afterwards. Uh, so how do you... Um, take on this work. So basically, you start by trying to build an open blast Pyodide shell library. Uh, and there were some issues at the linker stage. And we asked open blast whether they could change a few things. And eventually, we managed to do that. It took some time. But uh, thanks to open blast uh, maintainer help, we, we got there. Then you use open blast in SciPy, in SciPyodide. And, you, and, and then it builds. And you're super happy. But now you try import SciPy, and it breaks at import time. And this is a bit hard to explain, but basically, like the, the type where, where it didn't match between like s what you export from the uh, shared library and what you try to import at another shared library. And this is the kind of stuff that takes time to, uh, to, to fix. 
And once you manage to do import SciPy, then you run the SciPy test suite and you hope that you didn't make the situation worse than before, before Silapac, with Silapac. Okay, once you've done that, uh, then you have plenty of hacks you don't, you, because you're trying many, many things and you don't remember why you did them and you say, okay, why on earth? And uh, it takes a while to clean up. So that's about like 100 plus commits. It took a while. It's not a full-time thing, obviously, but over four months, plenty of uh, inputs and help from the Biodyne maintainers. Um, at one point, uh, Hood was in Paris, so we did a, a live session, and I realized, okay, this guy doesn't know everything off the top of his head. He's just grabbing. I can grab, so I can do that. And uh, that helped a lot, actually. He made a lot of progress while he was there. And, and basically, the good, uh, the good uh, story is that it was actually switching to OpenBus was actually the last piece that made uh, the scikit-learn test pass. So there were other fixes in between, but basically switching to OpenBus uh, makes scikit-learn test pass. So that's, that's great. Super happy about that. And also it makes the whole thing more maintainable. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to another thing, like making scikit-learn uh, uh, documentation more interactive. So if you've been to Arturo's talk this morning, you might have heard of Things Gallery. Otherwise, basically, if you looked at a gallery example from Matplotlib, Scikit-Learn, Scikit-Image, or other packages, then basically that's what you use behind the scenes to generate the example gallery and the example HTML and something like this. And I did the work to add the Jupyter-like button at the end, so that this is the thing at the bottom, launch light, so that what you, when you're on your example, you can click launch light and you will use um, a Jupyter-like instance to, to run... Uh, uh, the example code. So it took a little bit of time as well, but uh, it's there. And, and now I did also the work to actually, uh, now that it was available in Sphix Gallery, to add the, the, to the scikit-learn documentation. So scikit-learn documentation is using it already. Uh, try it and report if you see any issues. Uh, and scikit image kind of uh, merged the PR, but then reverted it saying, ah, it's a bit tacky still, let's wait a bit more. And uh, so it almost uses it, let's say. Okay. Something like that we kind of need uh, is that basically you might want to have Jupyter Lite specific modification of your notebook, basically. Why? The first thing is to put like a markdown cell at the beginning saying, oh, this is still beta, it might, it might break. Uh, first thing. The other thing is that you have a Pyodite kernel, but uh, there's no way to say, uh, I want Seaborn already installed in it. Oh, there might be ways, but okay, let's, let's discuss afterwards about that if you care. But so basically you want to say pip install, like a person pip install to install some of other packages. You have this thing that uh, if you try to do HTTP request inside Pyodide, it will probably not work. So if you try to use request or something like that, so you, Pyodide HTTP is something to patch all the URL lib and request to actually use the JavaScript fetch uh, behind the scenes. Uh, and it kind of works if you have the right uh, cross-origin headers and things. Uh, same thing, if you want to know more about that, talk to me. There is some problem with import. I can go more about details about that. Um, but I've passed on this one. And yeah, scikit image as a data registry, and, and you need to switch to data behind the cross proxy. Future work about that. Um, so, and that's why scikit image was like reverted it, I think, is that basically when you get the Pyodite kernel, there's, you get whatever uh, version of Pyodite gives you. So, for example, if you use the Pyodite on 23, you will get scikit-learn 1.2.2, and that's it, right? And you would like to be able to control that, and the one way to do that is to build our own scikit-learn Pyodite wheel, which is not too hard to do, but then we don't have any, uh, a good place to put it for now. So. This, is, uh, this needs to be discussed. Uh, my hope is that anaconda.org, where we put our nightly wheels, for example, would be a good place. But for now, there are limitations with uh, what seems like uh, cross-origin uh, resource sharing and HTTP redirect. So I don't know. I need to ask again. Well, OK, takeaway message. So if you're doing a tutorial, maybe consider using JupyterLite for your next tutorial and report any issues to JupyterLite or Pyodyne. Uh, Sphinx Gallery uh, has a Jupyter Live button. If you're using it in your package, give it a go. And same thing, complain. Uh, if it, uh, it's a bit uh, not convenient to use. So packaging OpenBlast was quite work, but uh, it helped to solve the tr uh, tricky Pyodide issues and improvement ability. Scikit-learn test pass with Pyodide development version. This is great. Uh, SciPy, on the other end, has still plenty of issues. So as I say, if you're Want you to get your endeavors into this kind of thing, talk to me afterwards. Uh, medium term or long term, L4 trend might be your saver, we will see. 
And that's it. Uh, thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you, Loic, for this catchy and <laughs> presentation. And thanks for your efforts to bring this uh, game-changing technologies. It will really be a game-changer for educating, teaching uh, Python and Scikit-learn, for instance. So we have a bit of time for questions. Please wait for the microphones to come to you, because it's recorded. Do you, we have any questions in the audience? Yeah. Mike? Thanks for the great talk. Uh, do you have any experience with C-types? Can, can you just compile something to a, a shared library similar to the SOO on the, on the file system and use C-types to access it? Do you have any experience with this? Uh, with C-types? Yeah. Uh, I don't have any experience, but I saw some SciPy tests failing because it was not finding the symbol with C-types, so there might be some issues there as well. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to chat afterwards. Uh, because I have a free project with C-types, and if you want to move it there, then... And Okay. The rock. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks. So, one more question. Yes, Tim. In front. Yeah. Do you think it's possible to have something like Git available in Jupyter Lite so that you can make pull requests? That's. Uh, I guess. Maybe that's a good question. I, I guess if you can compile it, why not? Uh, then you might get issues with the you know, network kind of limitation inside the browser. But I've seen stuff, so it's not based on... Um, I'm going to get this uh, wrong. It's not based on Wasm, but for example, uh, uh, VS Studio Dev, the thing that's in your browser where you can develop, they want to use uh, Wasi. I think that's what Brett Cannon is, use, is interested in, the, in this thing is because they want to get WASI, which is another runtime without the browser limitation, because it's supposed to have POSIX uh, functionality or something like that. Uh, and they want, I guess, for this kind of stuff, to enable more stuff like this, or to have a flake eight using the, you know, the built-in pyodide, uh, you know, using the, the py Python uh, from uh, WebAssembly uh, running so that you don't have a Python process, same thing. So there are some workflow like this that may be doable at one point. Uh, that's a good question. One last question, maybe? Yeah, there you are. Hi, Luke. Thank you very much for the great talk. I was wondering whether you have um, explored it a bit functions uh, uh, in the scikit-learn, which has limitations of PyDide. Or just use the test to, to assemble, to assess. Oh, you mean but like uh, something that would be wider than, than the test, you mean? Or? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I had an idea to actually test the, the, the MOOC on it. Uh, I haven't done it. But my hope is that the test has a, has a good coverage. So, you know, basically, if the test works, then it should be fine. <laughs> but, yeah, you, you are you're uh, more than welcome to, if you find some uh, problems to, to report them on the tracker and tag me. <laughs> I can tell you already something that doesn't work. Okay. Which is the but uh, something to keep in mind is that it passes with the Pyodide development version. So... Yeah, no, no, no. It's like intrinsically not working, which is the fetch okay. functions okay. from the data set. Okay. So fetch is this Pyodide HTTP stuff. But we can talk yeah, a exactly. bit more about, about it. Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Loïc, thank you for your questions.